Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we'll be discussing the sacraments of the Catholic Church, but before we do, a word about the nature of the sacraments in general. A number of people in modern and recent times have attempted to say that the sacraments, being actions on our part, can't be required for our salvation, in the way, for example, that faith is. In saying this, they make two big mistakes. Mistake number one is in thinking that actions on our part aren't required for salvation. St. Paul says that each man will be judged according to what he has done. And in Matthew 25, Jesus says clearly that in the end, when God separates the sheep from the goats, the deciding factor will ultimately be what they did and did not do. The fact that some forms of action are required for salvation is a deeply scriptural one, even though our actions themselves are not sufficient to earn salvation. Mistake number two is in seeing the sacraments primarily as human acts. That's false. The sacraments are primarily acts of God in that he's the one who validates the sacraments by his divine decree, and he contributes to the entire saving power of the sacrament. Now, I could begin with the sacrament of baptism, since it's a requirement for all of the others, including reconciliation. But the last season ended on the topic of the forgiveness of sins, so instead, I'll begin by continuing that theme. The first of the sacraments to discuss, therefore, is reconciliation. Reconciliation is known by several other names, such as penance and confession, but it's basically the same regardless. A Catholic will enter a private area with a priest, often separated from the priest by a partition or wall of some kind. At one time, the priest and confessor were even in separate boxes connected to one another, a practice that I think had many benefits to it and which it wouldn't kill us to resurrect. Once the priest and confessor take up their positions, the confessor whispers some information to the priest, often an admission of the fact that they've sinned and how long roughly it's been since they've confessed. Then they attempt to whisper their sins to the priest, all the ones that they can recall. Once that's done, the confessor says the prayer, known as the act of contrition, to express that they're sorry for having sinned. However, the most important part is yet to come. The priest, having heard the confession, tells the confessor what to do in order to demonstrate their sincerity in repenting and in some small way to attempt to make amends. This thing they're told to do is called a penance and is usually something simple, such as a few prayers or a good deed for someone they've hurt. After that, the priest says a prayer over the confessor, ending in the words, I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Once that's done, the sacrament is completed, and God has forgiven the confessor of all their sins, both mortal and venial. The confessor can then leave to complete their penance and or go about their business. However, some things can cause this sacrament to be invalid or ineffective. That's why next time we'll be discussing the requirements for a good confession. When is it valid or invalid? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.